when I was in Truth 10 in Boy Scouts. He was assistant scoutmaster. Tom and Steve, his son, were in Truth 10, and we all became good friends. I stayed in touch with Mr. Graham my whole life. He visited me in Los Angeles, and we spent the day together at my machine shop in Hollywood where I worked. I used to call him up throughout my career to ask his advice on machine shop problems as they arose in my day to day efforts. He never disappointed me. One time I was visiting him in his shop, and he showed me an airplane part he was trying to duplicate. He asked me to take on the problem. That was my watershed moment. Mr. Graham has given me something for a change. I told him I'd think about it on the drive back to my mom's house when I had to. I knew it would come to me in a minute. By the time I got to the house, I had my Eureka moment and got on the phone. That will work, he told me. Being able to help a man that had looked out for me throughout my perilous high school years and gave me countless life lessons, as well as sound machine shop advice, anytime I asked, well, that made my day. Mr. Graham always seemed to be like a guy who never needed anybody's help, and maybe the kind of guy he was, he never had to ask. I don't know. I don't think he would have lacked for people who were more than willing if he needed a hand. He made a bunch of old cards and mailed me, and mailed one to me, which I kept on the wall in my office for years until I kept it, left the company. Thank you, Mr. Graham, for everything including the most valuable thing, your friendship. So that's from Dan. Who um, had my father as a teacher?
to visit me down in Portland. And my brother Mark actually went with him on one of those trips. So he got to live that part of history of being a gentleman flyer and fly his airplane whenever he wanted, right off the runway, right off from the house. The other thing that Dad did was he grew a very large garden there. And who has had vegetables out of Dad's garden? Yeah, I love that. Yeah. So he was always a connection to his community. And again, that, that is one thing I always think about when I think about Dad. He was, he was there if he needed help, and he could help on so many subjects. That's kind of what I have to say. Do you want to come tell some stories? Appropriate to push back just talking for a minute and plays a minor role. That's Bill Asimov. When I got married, I would always, you know, at Christmas, my dad would give me some presents and a little stocking stuffer. And the stocking stuffer was always pairs of wool socks, which he had bought at an Apple store. Bonnie came from California. When it was cold or snowy, she didn't like to go outside. She, frankly, didn't need or want or Used the socks and they started really <laughs> And eventually, Dad turned to buying Powell socks, which everybody can use. Then, Bonnie left her job at the hospital. She started working as a tour guide. And she led people through, out in the cold, through the kingdom. Excuse me, it's not the kingdom, it's the Seahawks Stadium. It's Century Lynn Stadium. But she was standing out in the cold and she started wearing rain clothes. And out of those boxes, she pulled all those old socks and she started wearing them. And now, when she goes down and she works at the stadium, she thinks you know, of dad and she goes, Those weren't such bad dresses after me. <laughs> and that was a story she was going to come here to tell. So, unfortunately, as I said, she couldn't make it. That's. My duty to make it. The other thing I was going to talk about was a little bit about his work with the clubs in the Seattle, or not Seattle, the Comanche area. Um, he was always busy doing things. But no matter how busy he was, he did have a few things to stand up for a friend or two. It seemed like when I went through Safeway, it would be four conversations before we would even get to the line to check in. Um, and as you've already heard, he was involved in the, the American Legion, the, the Scout Troop 10, and Post 10. He was involved with Kiwanis downtown for, I think, 25 years, and the Chicago, uh, not Chicago, the uh, Cashmere Kiwanis for about 10 years. And he worked there cooking various affairs and doing whatever was necessary. He also was a bell ringer um, for the Salvation Army and very involved each year at the Toys uh, for Tots Marine Drive. He had his shop students, Woodstock shooting students, make blocks and wooden toys that would be donated. And he would repair bicycles and tricycles and with the help of Red scan, red when exercise, they would be renewed and they would be given to the children. They would receive very nice and beautiful bikes. And it was one of those things that he enjoyed because he was helping his students do something for the community that they were feeling. And I think that's the thing that he felt best about was the fact that he saw his students learning something using it. The other things he did, he similar patrol. He was very involved in. He taught a lot of people to learn to fly and to like um, aviation. He worked with Atlantic uh, Aircraft, the Experimental Aircraft Association. He helped a lot of people build their planes. When Boeing created the Red Barn, their historical uh, museum. He was very involved with that and built antique air parts for them. He really enjoyed that. 
schools, they had debts, they had metal, they had odd things that he even he didn't know what was. And I remember him looking at one and thinking, I'm not sure what this is, but I may just take this home. I'm glad to be able to go and have this and to be able to think about it. Because each time I talk to people, it brings back something more that I remember. And his general love for the community and the people around him. He was very glad to have the friends he did. They were always welcome. He was always welcome. Uh, hello, I'm Mark Graham. I'm Bruce's son. Uh, Bruce and two other brothers are very, very sweet to you. Uh, what can I say? Uh, uh, Dad started teaching in 1958. Uh, I was born in 1960. Pretty much grew up in Natchez. Uh, but uh, I also attended Natchez High School and uh, like a lot of us other students. And, and it's kind of interesting. Just thinking back to the high school years, uh, you know, there's an assortment of students. There, there are students who can read things and understand it uh, perfectly, but there's other folks who have to have it in their hands and work with it and look at it and, uh, and see how it comes together. And uh, so, not to blame it to everything, but um, every now and then there were students who weren't the ace scholars, but they're more of the uh, paper can be put on this board. <laughs> and they would end up in the, in the shop class. And uh, it was pretty wonderful because sometimes folks had dyslexia, couldn't read, couldn't write too well, but if you gave them a file or a hammer, uh, they could shape something out. And I think my father thought everybody has value, and that everybody can do something and, and be productive in life. And so if you're not, not a scholar, there's still a place for you, uh, your skills and abilities to do something. I know he was really discouraged about the time he was retiring. Uh, the computers were coming in place. I thought a lot of folks were uh, jumping onto the computer bandwagon. And he was a little bit afraid that America would lose their skills and abilities to machine products and manufacture things within the United States. And so he was a little bit discouraged about that. But I, I think your students and knowing him that uh, he always encouraged folks to go home and try to fix something and uh, I, I know he would get uh, he'd get a little frustrated when he would go to buy uh, uh, a sprinkler a garden sprinkler or something that was made out of plastic or something or he came from the air where it was either steel or aluminum something that you could fix or manufacture or replace the bronze gears or something and uh, so he didn't really buy into the disposable society. So I think if he was here today, he would say, hey, if you still have a shop project out there in your shop, or you've got a drill, you know, don't just go buy some other piece of plastic, a uh, piece of junk at the store. Uh, go out and build or manufacture something for yourself. And to you, that's going to have some value okay, and last for a long time. Yeah. That's about uh, all I have to say. Turn it over to uh, folks who would like to come up or uh, share their experiences or a story. Um, 